Have you ever wondered what's the difference between film and commercial color grading and how to achieve it? If yes, this video is for you, as color grading film and commercials can have some differences because of different goals and aesthetics of each medium. The whole point of creating commercials is to draw people's attention to the product. Hence, the color grading in commercials always looks vibrant, eye-catching and clean. It prioritizes bright colors, high contrast and boosted highlights to convey a sense of energy and excitement. The film, on the other hand, may use more harmonious and subtle color to enhance storytelling and evoke specific emotions. That's why in the film we often use less tonal range and we also use other techniques like adding film grain to make it look more believable. In this video, I will share with you a few techniques in DaVinci Resolve that can help you to achieve both filmic and more commercial looks. Let's move to the tutorial. And this is the clip we will be working on today. It's been shot with Ari in Loxy. So let's switch to color managed environment first to convert it to Rec. 709. And if you don't know what's the color management in Resolve, I will tag here one of my previous tutorials where I'm explaining it. So let's just go to the project settings over here. Then make sure you have your color management tab selected. And then we will change the color science from DaVinci YRGB to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. Then I will leave the automatic color management here. And I will change the color processing mode to HDR as my clip is HDR. And I will leave the output color space set to SDR Rec. 709. Let's hit save. And now we can see that my clip hasn't been remapped to the right color space yet. And this is because this Arilog clip has been converted to ProRes, so DaVinci Resolve couldn't recognize the right color space, and we have to set it manually. So let's right click on the thumbnail, then let's select Input Color Space, and in my case it will be Arilog C3. And now my clip is remapped and ready for grading. And we'll start from creating the commercial look first. But before we move on to the primary color correction, let's create a note at the beginning that will be our noise reduction. You can use the noise reduction if you have an access to the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, but we'll come back to it at the very end. And now let's create another note and let's call it exposure. And I will use my primary wheels to adjust my exposure. And as this is a commercial look, I will create a white tonal range, which means that I'll keep my highlights as high as possible and my shadows as low as possible to get a nice contrasty look. So let's increase the exposure first. And we can do it with the offset that will impact the clip uniformly. So I'll increase the offset a bit to make my clip quite bright. Then I will not touch the shadows actually, as looking at the scopes, I can tell that my shadows already touch zero here, so they're in the right place. But I will decrease my mid-tones a bit. And then I will push my gain, that's highlights, up a bit as well. Like this. And I will also add a bit of contrast with the contrast slider. And this is before and after. I've also mentioned in the intro that the commercial look is often very realistic and clean. This clip is very warm, so we have to balance the colors properly. So let's create another serial note. And let's call it balance. And I will use my temp and tint sliders first. So let's push the temperature towards blue quite a lot. Then I will add a bit of green tint to the clip as well. And now the skin looks a bit too green in my opinion, so I will add a bit of blue in the mid-tones, changing the value over here, just one point, like this. And this is before and after. A huge difference. We have transformed this clip completely. And then as this is a commercial look, 
we shouldn't be scared of the vibrancy in the clip. And blue is the most dominant color here, so I will boost it a bit more with some secondary adjustments. So I'll create another serial node then, and I will call it sky. And then I'll go to my curves, and I will use the hue versus saturation curve. And again, if you want to learn more about curves in DaVinci Resolve, I will tag here my other tutorial where I'm explaining HSL curves properly. And then we only need to select blue in the clip in the viewer. And by doing this, the point will appear in the right place on the curve. And to increase the vibrancy of the sky, we just need to push it up like this. And this is before and after. Now, as commercials to really stand out, we can do one more trick. We can boost the highlights in the clip even more. So let's create another node and let's call it highlights. And now let's go to the qualifier over here and let's turn the highlight on to be able to see the selection. And we'll focus on the luminance slider. So by pushing it up, we will select only the brightest parts of the clip. Like this. And we should also soften it right here. And then I will push it a bit up even more. Sometimes it takes a while to get to the right point. Okay, I think this works for me. I really want to select only the brightest parts of the clip. So let's turn the highlight off now. And we can, for example, go back to the white curve. And we can boost highlights by pushing them up somewhere in the middle. Like this. And this is before and after. So we've created that quite shiny commercial look. I really like it. And now let's see properly before and after. Great. And now we will transform this clip into more filmic look and we will use this grade as a base. So the first thing I will do is to change the tonal range of this clip. I want to have less prominent highlights and the shadows and you'll also be able to see it on the waveform as we'll be compressing it. So let's create a new node and let's call it Film Exposure. And I will go back to my primaries again and we'll start from pushing lift up and gamma down, pushing lift up and gamma down to increase the shadows and at the same time to decrease the midtones to get more dense look. So let's do it. I am just slowly, step by step, increasing my shadows and decreasing my midtones like this. And I also want to keep my gain a bit higher, just a bit. So I'll push it up just a touch. And this is before and after. Look at the difference. And I will also disable this extra highlight here, as I don't want it for my filmic look. So again, this is the commercial look and this is the film look. The film look is more thick and the commercial look is more contrasty. And also look at the differences on the waveforms. But it's not the end yet, as now we'll carry on with building our film look. So now I'll create two layer nodes, as I am happy with how the skin tones look and I don't want the look to affect them too much. So my bottom node will be my skin and the top node will be my look. And again, if you want to learn more about different types of nodes, I will tag here another video where you can learn the basics. But basically, the way the layer nodes work is that the node below takes a priority over the node above it. So if I isolate my skin tones below, the film look I will be creating on the top node will not affect them. So let's move on to that. I will select the skin node and I will turn the highlight on again to be able to see the selection. And we could simply use the qualifier and we could manually select the skin tones. But there's actually an easier way of doing it. 
So we can go up here to color, then presets. And let's select six vector yellow. And this will automatically select the yellow parts of the clip. And now we can refine the selection as this is too subtle to what I need. So first I'll increase my hue range and then my saturation range to grab more of that skin. And let's play the clip. Looking good, but let's also denoise it a bit here. And let's blur it. All right. And also let's turn the highlight off. And now let's click on the look node and let's start creating the look. And again, we can do it with the primaries. And sometimes instead of using the color wheels, it's easier to use the red, green and blue values below. So let's do it today. So I'll maybe add some green in the highlights. Then I will take off a bit of blue here. Now maybe the overall look is too yellow, so I will actually take a bit of green from the whole image using the offset. And this is before and after. A huge difference. Now, before performing the last step I want to show you, let's go back to the noise reduction node and I will zoom in so you can see the noise on YouTube. When we play it, we can see quite a lot of noise that we can remove. So let's just grab the noise reduction from the effects. Then let's just drop it onto our node. And now we only need to increase the luma and chroma threshold over here. And this is before and after. And now, because we've created that quite vintage film look, we can also add some grain at the end. So let's create a new node and let's call it Film Grain. And now we can also grab Film Grain from the Effects tab. So let's zoom in as well so you can see it. And here you have a lot of types of the Film Grain to choose from. I will leave 16mm film and I will also not change any other settings here. So let's just play the clip so you can see how vintage looking is our film look. And now let's see our two looks side by side. <laughs>